Why are there five Warhammer Crusaders standing around over another who's missing a foot? Stick around and find out. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In my previous video, we looked at how we could optimize the 0.4mm nozzle to get the best prints possible. In the comments section, there were a lot of calls to analyze different settings for the 0.2mm nozzle. So that's what we're going to do today. Since we're working with a new model, the very first thing I want to do before switching over to the 0.2 nozzle is to print a 4.4 version using our optimized properties. I grabbed this model from Thingiverse, so it's probably a Warhammer model reproduction, but I like the look of it and it has a ton of detail, which will hopefully accentuate some of the property changes we're going to be trying. I loaded this model on the same project that we printed the Ogre, so everything should be the same. I give this one last look and send it on its way. For a 0.08 extra fine profile, around 2 hours total is pretty great. Let's send it to the printer and check out how it does. After a pretty smooth print, the trouble started with removing the supports. The model's mace requires a lot of tree supports and ultimately it broke when I was removing them. Also, the cloak at the front is very thin and also required gluing. Lastly, her right foot also snapped off and it was glue time again. Quality-wise, however, I am impressed. While the camera highlights all the imperfections, when looking at the model with the naked eye, it really does look great. However, there are some details which seem a bit muddled, particularly in the face and some of the decorations in her front chest armor. I'm excited about what the point two nozzle will bring out here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and swap out the point four nozzle and put our point two on. I'll take this opportunity to clean out the rubber protector. It always gets dirty with dried filament hair, and I never go to the trouble of removing it to clean it since I always feel like I'm going to rip it. I really should just order a set of replacements since I just realized that the nozzles I ordered didn't come with one. Side note, this is what my current .4 nozzle looks like. It's like both burnt and dirty. I don't know how much life it has left but it's my original one, so it served me well regardless. I may send it off to Nozzle Heaven when I go to test out some glow-in-the-dark PLA I ordered. Let me know if you'd like to see some projects with that. Next, I tell the printer that I'm now using a .2 nozzle, and we're on our way. Now, the very first thing I want to do is get a baseline print with the .2 nozzle, and see where we can go from there. So first, I switch to the .2 nozzle in Bamboo Studio, Next, I switch to a 0 0.10 profile and start there. At first I thought about doing the standard one, but then decided to go for high quality instead, since I want to get everything I can out of this, even at the baseline. Now I review everything to make sure things are correct and... <laughs> Notice something here? The quality settings are still pointing to the value they changed for the 0.4 nozzle and the other profile. I didn't catch this until the print was more than halfway done, so I decided to leave it in and see how it would look regardless. After slicing, we're still looking at around 2 hours of print time, which I think is great for the .2 nozzle, though that could be a factor of the settings I forgot to change. But let's see what we get anyway. I color-coded all the models at this point since I knew I was going to lose track of which was which. As you can tell by the crooked mace, I had issues with it as well. Same with the cloak. Not foot problems on this one though, but you can definitely tell that the details have already started to show more prominently. The face is showing a lot more features, the details on the front armor chest piece are more apparent, and the small details like the lines on the pack she's carrying and the sigils on her boot tops are now very clear. We can basically stop speaking of layer lines at this point because I don't really see any. The only issues I see here come from the removal of the supports. Now it's a matter of dialing in the settings. Let's do another baseline with the proper quality settings reset. This time around, I reset everything, including the speed changes to make sure that I wasn't setting things faster than the profile calls for. So the only things that remain changed are the support settings because, well, we need those. We're still looking at around 2 hours print time, 
that's still pretty great. This model is about 40 millimeters high, which is well below what our Ogre was. Well, as you can see, I had issues with the foot again. And I mistakenly removed the supports over a trash can full of all the support material, and I lost the foot. Well, other than the foot problem, the only real issues with the model is some of the artifacts that remain after removing supports. And that's an issue throughout all these prints. Still, quality-wise, it looks good. I feel like now we're getting to the point where we're optimizing for minutia. But that's still something we should strive for, to squeeze every last ounce of quality we can. There's still a few more tests to do. Sorry about the lack of camera focus here. In the previous video, a user commented that they had good success with tweaking some of the settings on the .12 profile. They were using a P1S, so we'll do our best to translate those to the A1 that I'm using now. We're going to stick with the .10 high quality profile, since there's no reason to go down to the .12, since the time to print isn't too bad. The only quality settings they suggested were to turn on smoothing wall speed along the Z axis. If you don't see the setting, then you may need to turn on developer mode. He also made a note about a avoid crossing wall setting. If you turn that on, they suggested to turn max detour length to 12 millimeters. Let's turn on smoothing and move on to the strength tab. Here they suggest wall loose to be 2 or 3. We'll change it to 2. Top shell and bottom shell fall within their suggestions as well, so we'll leave those at their current values. The next suggestion is to turn infill to 12%. I think this is more of a time savings than an optimization, but for the sake of the experiment, we'll change it to 12. The infill pattern should be gyroid, which it already is, so we'll leave it and move on to the speed settings. Here, surprisingly, nothing much changes. The one thing that will change is the top surface value to 100. After this, we'll move on to the supports. Here, we already have a lot of the suggested values. Three supports set to Auto, Default Style. The one thing that will change here is the Threshold Angle, and we'll set that at 52%. From there, the top and bottom Z distance are already at the suggested point too from our previous tests. One thing we will change is Support Wall Loops from the default minus 1 to 2. Top Interface Layers is already at 2, and the suggested is 2 or 3, so we'll leave it. We will change top interface spacing from 0.5 to 0.35, and finally, we'll change branch angle to 60 degrees. That's the extent of the changes. A huge thanks to Riley Allen 6032 for giving the community the settings they use for mini prints. It warms my cold heart seeing people come together, particularly since some of my videos get some really nasty comments. I really do appreciate the discussions though, so if you have your own print settings or want to thank Riley Allen for taking the time out to help everyone, please leave a comment down below. Once again, we're looking at a 2 hour print, give or take. Let's get this going and check out the results. And here we have our finished Crusader. Once again, there were some issues with supports in some of the thinner areas like the bottom of the cloak that hangs in the front. I tried a different method of removing the supports from the mace, which helped since I braced the stick while removing the supports, but it was still wobbling in the end. The foot still popped off, and I think the infill percentage set to 12% did not help matters. What I would do in the future is add a modifier to increase the infill percentage in the parts that are very fragile, like the feet here. Detail-wise, though, it once again looks great. The details on the shoulder guards are apparent, as is the ridges in the front carrying pouches. The boot plates are also very sharp. If there's anything I would change here is maybe the speed settings a slight bit, and slow it down a little bit, and as I mentioned, the infill. We have two more tests to go. Can we really get that much more out of the .2 nozzle? Let's find out. A few commenters mentioned the FDG profile. That's the Fat Dragon Games profile that they specifically created to print minis. So I went to their website and they only asked for a contribution to download the profile. So I contributed and got their guide to printing FDM miniatures PDF along with the profile. I'll leave a link to their site down in the description. Definitely go visit them. 
Let's go ahead and get their configuration loaded in and our Crusader printed. I'm not going to go over all their settings since they obviously put a lot of work into it, but suffice it to say, they made some of the same changes to the printer settings, the filament settings, and profile that we did on the last video, but with obviously different values and settings. So I'm excited to try this out and see if there's an obvious difference. We're looking at around two and a half to three hours of print time with this profile, so you can tell that they made some speed changes. Let's check out the finished print. And here we are. We'll start off with the negatives, only because they applied to all the other prints as well, and it's not the fault of the profile at all. We had the same situation with the mace and the cloak here. Those areas are just too thin in this model, and that's not something we can blame the print settings on. They just need to be thicker and stronger. Happily, the foot remained intact. There are some artifacts in the cloak piece that broke off, but that's due to the supports. Everything else seems good, including the front details, which seem sharp. Perhaps a bit sharper than the previous print. It's pretty subjective, but if I were to compare the two, I'd probably give this one a very slight edge. Let's do one more print, and this time, I'm just going to go all out on the nozzle and use the highest quality default. At this point, no matter what property changes I make, it really isn't making that much of a difference. The only things I would change at this point for a future model would be the angle of the print to eliminate some of the supports in the thinner areas and the support settings. We'll change the profile to 0.06 high quality and use some of the properties we used before. We'll turn on smoothing along Z and we'll change wall loops back to 2 as well. We'll also slow things down a bit to see if we can get some more detail out. There were a couple comments in the previous video that said doing this can have a negative effect, but since the previous prints were mostly done at default speeds, we should do at least one print with the speed change to see if it negatively affects it or not. Lastly, I'll change the support's branch angle to 60 and the Z distances back to 0 0.2. With those speed changes, we're now looking at a 3.5 to 4 hour print. Let's get it going and see the results. And here we are. Again, everything is looking really sharp. This time around, I managed to keep the mace intact, but it was on the verge of snapping off. I reinforced it with some glue to give it some structure. The cloak snapped off again, but the foot stayed in one piece and I had no issues with it. The print is detailed and there's very few problems that aren't related to supports. All the details come through, and I don't see any layer lines with my eyes or even in the photos. There were a couple of spots that have some stringing, however, so that may be a cause of the speed changes. Could the commenters be right after all? Nah. Anyway, after all this, I wanted to get an ogre print done since I had the nozzle installed and I had the time. The ogre is large compared to this crusader, and we know where the layer line issues were on that model from the previous video. So there were a few suggestions to use the variable layer height feature and see what were the results were. So first, I'm going to reset things to the regular profile and apply some of the changes we did on our last video, namely some of the fan speed and temperature changes. Watch the last video to see what those were. I'll speed through them here so at the very least you'll be able to pause and see what they are. For this test, I'm going to go back to the 0.10 high quality setting. I think that will give us a good baseline that we can kick off with. As we change the speed settings for the last Crusader print, everything is pretty much where we need it to be here. We'll do a quick slice and see where we are before the variable layer height changes. We're looking at around 4 hours or so. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with the layer heights now. If we keep the defaults and do a slice, we're looking at an 8 hour print. I still have commitment issues for anything over 6 hours. So let's refine things a bit. I know from the previous print that the head, the hands, and the hammer were issues. The top of the feet as well. We'll refine those areas a bit more and make them print at a higher quality. I'll skip through some of this and speed through the tweaking. If you're not familiar with the variable layer height tool, it allows you to tweak certain parts of your model's quality on a layer basis. You have your quality gauge on the right that you can push and pull the line to get more or less line height at a particular height. The sliders will allow you to refine the trade-off between quality and speed 
and how big of a radius to apply to the area where the changes are to take place. One note here, I came back and changed the branch angle back to the default and the threshold angle to 40 since I had two failed attempts for the prints where the supports did not hang on and snapped off. So the total print time was closer to about 6 hours. Now, let's check the results. He looks amazing. There was a height range that I missed on the right shoulder that is showing some layer lines, but the rest look as smooth as can be. I bet if I had kept the full default variable height settings or simply changed the profile to one that's higher in quality, we would have gotten a totally smooth ogre. I'm really happy with it. And if you were going to paint this model, you would not have any issues with having to deal with ridged layer lines. Now for some final words. I know there's going to be some purists out there who insist that the only way to print minis is to use resin, and I can understand their perspective. There's a lot less tweaking and testing to be done if you're simply going to take a pre-supported model from some pack that you bought and click print. But for those of you who don't want to deal with the chemicals, the fumes, the equipment, and the washing and curing, FDM printers have definitely gotten to the point where they can compete. If you don't mind tweaking things a bit, you can have a very high quality print from your FDM printer. If you don't want to tweak, give Fat Dragon Games a couple bucks and download their print profile. It really is great. I hope this video was helpful. If you thought so, please hit subscribe and give it a like. If you hated it, leave a comment and let me know why. I might pin it and make fun of you to all my friends. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time on the Custom Corner.